Yeah, I guess today we're just talk. What? Yeah, it's beginning. Okay. Uh, today we are going to be speaking about uh, the commemoration of the Rwandan genocide. We're going to speak about truth and reconciliation and just give our own, um, the panels will give their own thoughts about the process of remembering and whether um, you feel like it is beneficial, especially for the younger generation or whether it's uh, more damaging than anything. Uh, but before we start, I'll let the panelists introduce themselves. My name is Sasa Kainde and I, I'm, I'm, part of a, <laughs> I'm part of the panel today. So um, we'll start with Mr. Justin Bahunger, just eldest first, if you could uh, introduce yourself to us again. <laughs> And I thank you very much indeed for giving me this opportunity and to go before ladies. Mutilated first. This is African culture. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought since we're we're talking about African things, we'll do African culture today. <laughs> okay. So so my name is Justin Bahunga. I live in London, UK. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think the ladies next. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Let's yeah. go. Yeah. My name is Nelson Muhiro. I live in Western Australia. Okay. Welcome, welcome. And Kami. Yeah, my name is Kami I live in Belgium, a little town called Vilvode. Okay, welcome. It's near welcome. near Brussels. Thank you. Um, whenever I speak about this, to me, sometimes it sounds silly because I was, I think, I wasn't even born. <laughs> when all of this happened, I was one years old in 1994, but I still think I can add a little bit of my experience uh, about how the the memory of it impacts me and, and, and my family. So I thought we'd start with sort of giving a small uh, background about the impact of the Rwandan genocide and the process of truth and reconciliation uh, to start um, Usually when people ask me, particularly when I'm arguing uh, with people uh, who are pro the regime, they used to always ask me the first question is, do you believe in the Rwandan genocide against the Tsitsis? And for the longest time, I didn't understand that that was both a political, a factual question and a political question. I now have an answer where I tell them, no, I do not believe in that. I believe in the Rwandan genocide which began in October 1990, uh, when a wing of the Ugandan army crossed into Rwanda and began a four-year uh, length civil war that unfortunately we all know ended with uh, the 100 days of genocide that prominently targeted uh, members of the Tutsi ethnicity and moderate uh, Hutu politicians on members of the Hutu elite. Um, so for me, in regards to truth and uh, truth and reconciliation. I grew up in a pacifist uh, community, so I didn't even know how to tell members of different ethnicities apart. We were very much uh, taught through pacifism, we are one people, et cetera, et cetera. So it never felt like I had something hanging um, under me. But once I've entered the Rwandan realm of politics, it's a completely different thing. I realize it's not a small question. So um, if you don't mind, we will start again with Mr. Bahunga, giving us um, a little background of however you'd like um, on your thoughts about just the process of remembering whether you think it has been beneficial or more traumatic to the Rwandan people. Well, thank you very much indeed. When we come to definition of whether it's genocide or not, I I take the judicial definition of the of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda because one of the elements they used to say about the genocide is the planning. But the tribunal indicated that they had not seen anything about the planning of the genocide. And I had also the RPF general prosecutor, who is Gahima Gerard, who said that up to the time that the plane of President Habyarimana was shot down, it didn't, there is no indication to show 
that there was a planning of killing Houthis. But that after that, there was a pattern that we were, were persecuted or killed because of being Tutsi. And for that, the, the judicial decision was that indeed the facts on the ground showed that there was indeed a genocide against Tutsi. But to say what you're saying is that the, the Rwandan government after the genocide they were saying there has been genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. It's Zimbabwe, which was later, for political reasons, we'll come to that later, that Rwanda was able to manipulate and the General Assembly to make it be called genocide against Tutsi. And to move out the other. And that's why. You find the countries like the United States of America, the UK, and even Japan were hard right explanatory notes to say that they, they still still that actually it was one that genocide and but included also other crimes like all crimes against crimes against humanity. And that's why there's a problem now between Rwanda and the United States of America when they send their message to say a genocide. And other crimes. But they recognize that it's not only the Tutsis who are killed, but also that the Hutus were killed. And in fact, on the, the 7th of April, after the downing of the plane, the first people, the casualties were the Hutus, two politicians, but also okay, by the RPF who came out of the CND and went to kill. Uh, civilian people who are mainly government civil servants, including, by the way, the, the, the parents and the family of Nadine Kansinje. She survived because she was not at home. That was the that's how That's how she survived. But the whole rest of the family was completely obliterated. But they lived near C and D. And in that reason, is that why we are saying also, when you say that there were two children, as we can. That is in my party, FDNG, we say that there has been also genocide against Hutu. Because the actions on the ground do show there was there was targeting the Hutus as such. So we also say there's genocide. And also to say that saying there was a genocide against Tutsi does not rule out, or it is an, not an intention to say it is one, one, if it's one minus one is zero, to say that justice must be served independent of the victim and independent of the perpetrator. That's, 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 where, that's where we stand. But now, when you come to commemoration, of course, when you come to say the process, of course, is wrong because it's selective. The justice was selective and the point is selective. And I believe that even the membranes has done today is politically motivated rather than sympathy or empathy to the Tutsi who died. Perhaps I can stop at this, at this juncture. We were here, my dear sister. Um, Thank you, Kami, please. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, what can I say? Uh, I, I didn't hear the, you, you, your last... Uh, oh, the yeah. question was, what is your experience with the process of remembering? And uh, about talk about the propaganda that okay. is very strong. Oh, it's the strong. same question. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think um, uh, for myself, I think the the the, the way it's uh, uh, it's done, it's really uh, to to divide the people. The, the people, the Tutsis can, can remember, but the Hutus can't remember because they say the Hutus are the killer. It's like. Uh, in Rwanda, they are the killer and the victims. That there, there's no, uh, there's no other part. When you are Hutu, you can be a victim. That that is, uh, that is what is uh, terrible among the Rwandans, because there can be, uh, there can be any reconciliation when people who have been, who have lost their their loved one, the Hutus, are. Uh, yeah, are treated like 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 only killers. 
when they are victims. So uh, what I can say is uh, it's a um, difficult process for, for the Hutus who are in Rwanda, but also for those who are out of Rwanda, uh, because even here, when the, the, the Hutus say say they, they they have lost people they, they, they people that they, they don't believe them it's like no you you're lying what you're saying is not true and uh, i think as um as hutus it's uh, a big problem to to be seen only like a a killer a bourreau, bourreau in french i don't know how you can the killer exactly yeah correct yeah a killer mm -hmm. yeah and um i think and that is for also for the for the young generation because when you talk with the the young people they are like frustrated by by that uh statement they say why why uh i know my my parents didn't do anything i know they are hutus i know i'm hutu but i, I don't understand why i can be treated like someone who who lost people like those who who went to to Zaire, and they they they've been uh, fleeing the whole country, but they they've been, yeah, they, they went the, the whole country, the whole Zaire to to arrive like in in Congo Brazzaville in cent Central Africa in in other countries, and those when you are a kid and you 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 went through all that and then after you are treated like a killer not a victim it's really frustrating and uh, and hurting so i think it's um, it's something that touching that is start touching every generation all the Absolutely. generations of people who were in rwanda even though even the, those people like who like you Sasa, who said you you said you were you were like one one year one year old but yeah as long as you are a Hutu, you can be a victim. So that is really stigma. I would call uh, it the stigma. stigma. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and a dehumanization. Uh, I think that is, yeah, yeah that, I think that is really the, the, the hard part of being what we are. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Kami. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Kami. Yeah. It's absolute, I, mean, I think you would uh, thank you for giving that element of. This making one the bad guys and the good guys, and this is again something that goes against the process because you spoke of reconciliation. Reconciliation is not me in term technical terms about reconciliation. There's the four elements that are normally pillars to any genuine reconciliation. One is justice. As I was saying, there was Victor's justice in the case of Rwanda. Whereas the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda was set to judge or put responsible for crimes, for genocide, or crimes, crimes against humanity as a step to national reconciliation. And the same tribunal or security, New York Security Council says both sides of the conflict committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. And, but when it came to trying the perpetrators, only one side to the conflict was judged, it was justice. So unless there is justice, we cannot speak over the conciliation. It doesn't matter what you call it, when you call it genocide or crimes against humanity or war crime, justice is necessary. It doesn't matter how you how the outcome will be or the or the sentence will be, but there's some sense of justice must be there. And that didn't happen. And that's why now only one side is seen as perpetrator, then as a victim, and that's deliberate. Number two, there must be truth about what happened. Now, not only is it denied by many laws, 
that have prevented people from speaking about what happened. In the Rwanda law now, it, you are not allowed to question the way Rwanda defines genocide. Once you do try to find, to debate about it, you are seen a visionist, negationist, and so on. So truth can't be known. People have to say what happened to them. And, and, the, and the, the, all the documents available that not, there's not only one side which committed the crimes. And it's not to say, it's not equating genocide to other crime, but it's justice. That's, so you can't, you can't have, you can't have the reconciliation without justice. Number three, taking historical responsibility of what has happened, of the wrong which has been done. We know people have killed from 1990 from, from the border to 1996, even to today. Unless we accept that this happened and you're prevented from saying that, you cannot have reconciliation. Number four, it is changing the social and the political alliances or, or structures to ensure the inclusivity. But today, we know for sure that that inclusivity is not there. You know, there was a study done by US College of Los Angeles, UCLA, College, University College of Los Angeles. They had this over three years, which looked at the link between ethnic exclusion and the violence. From, from 19, for 1945 to 2005, over 155 countries. And it was done jointly with 100 experts from universities across the world. Their study concluded that Rwanda is one of the three most exclusionary countries in the world. That's Rwanda, Syria, and the Sudan. You know, Syria has, has happened already, has been war. In Sudan, it has been a period of two. So Rwanda is, is that. So there's, there cannot be the conciliation when there's such a discrimination. And you know, and the statistics do show that, I think from, I think decisions will sort of from ethnocracy, no, from dictatorship, ethnocracy, ethnocracy. So that again, you cannot have a reconciliation. Putting that together, that you are not even allowed, someone's not allowed even to mourn their dead. It's a terrible, I, I didn't say it, but I know Kam, I know her dad. I don't want to go into, into her personal story, but this is part of the, the part of the story. So when you speak about the process, it is not, but I think, but again, when you come to that, it's, it's not only, when I look at the bigger picture, is not, I don't even think that the present regime is interested in reconciliation. It is a divide and the rule. Because when um, if you look at if you look at, at the at the I mean the survival of the genocide, the, I think they are being used. We won't be having so many as I, we are so many survivors of the genocide being killed or in exile. I was reading just now the letter from uh, Diane Vigara, which is shown in 2019 to President Kagame, showing that a list of 40 Survivors of a genocide of high ranking, some of soldiers who, were, who have been killed or have disappeared. And they should ask the question if you are so, so during the morning, during the memorial, so if you care about the dead, what about the living? You should be more about the living than the dead. So, so for and me, Dr. Bahunga, sorry to cut you off. One of the things that I notice is about those survivors who are persecuted, they're people who are trying to create some sort of reconciliation within Rwandan society. So you have like someone like uh, Kizito, whose main Absolutely. drive was to try and create a humanizing empathy. But these seem to be the main people that the regime targets. And, and I think you have a, you are about to make your point. So. Exactly, I'm, and actually I'm going to go to the point, perhaps I don't want to, to monopolize the conversation, but I would like to say that the, all these memorials or what the membranes is a political rather than some empathy for the for the for, for those who have died. 
Well, then you've looked back. I think you know, I was in a conversation in, a, in an interview with uh, Dajijiman. He asked, tell me, give me two names of Tutsis who were killed or disappeared during Habi Arimana's time. Tell me the, the 20 year that was in Ipa. I want two names from 1973 to 1990 of Tutsis who were killed. But now we are having a list of 40 from 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 uh, the survival of this genocide, who is saying for the people, and then they, they are proper. This the Uigara, he made money, and some of them have made money under Habijani Mana. They have been dispossessed, or they have they have died in, 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 in suspicious circumstances. So then you have to go beyond actually the issue of empathy, the issue of a political tool. To, to, I mean, to keep power. And this is how it is happening. That's my view. And the whole strategy is if, how do we keep off the threat to our regime? But I think the people who are there now, what they want is just a power and to maintain it at any cost. Whether you are Hutu or Tutsi, if you are against the system, then you, then you, then you, are, you disappear or, or you die. And that's why I'm thinking that this the whole the whole process is government engineered. It not come from the the the, the, the survivor themselves. It's the government dictating. I can imagine. I can ask myself, Paritno, why did they ask the people who lost their loved one to be put in exhibition for tourists? Even if they were, I'm not a part of them because I know I've got relatives who died who must be there. Because they have, I mean, it is not only Tutsi who are in those, in those, in those uh, uh, memorials, mm -hmm. it's within the Tutsi. And that's how cynical that can be. That's the cynicism. I think sometimes we don't see that cynicism of that. So the threat. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and so the threat, I think, the, the first threat I think actually is Hutu. They say to the power. And how do you make sure you submit to them? One, is actually saying that all of these guys are either genocidaires or have got the, the, the genocide ideology. And, and that I was reading the book of Mahmoud Mabdani, who is uh, Professor Mabdani, who is uh, he's one of the, uh, the very... He's a historian experts. or something. And he's, the, he, he wrote a book called When Victims Become Killers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually, what they have done is to say, if a Hutu, if we didn't kill, you were a passive by, by, by bystander. Therefore, you are also morally or legally, you are you are you are guilty. Mm -hmm. So so that, so that so that and then the and for the victims, they will say that there are Hutu victims. And these victims are by, by, by the entire family. But when some survivors, only two say survivors. The others are not. We don't, they accept their victims. So again, it's a strategy to make sure that these guys keep quiet. The other part is putting divisionism, oh, the, 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 um, the, the genocide the ideology, all of this is meant to make sure that you submit and they feel guilty. So these memorials, sure. I think, it is to instill one. It instill this guilt among the among the Hutu community. Number two is constantly raise awareness about the threat of Hutu coming back to power. What they are saying, we stop the genocide. We are the only people who can stop any other any just genocide again. So it's always telling them, you know, every, you know. If we are not there, you are dead. And so even the tools like the tools who try to object, they are seen as a threat and a bigger threat because they are more credible. If they say if, if they are more mm -hmm. credible mm -hmm. when they complain, then perhaps the Hutu who have been really said, Oh my but, but you are a killer. Mm -hmm. So those are more dangerous to the system, probably, than what I would say. Because they're so more they needed, say, uh 
I sorry, I was going to say, because I think they're more needed for the narrative to survive than Hutus are needed because Hutus are just needed to be there as as a scare tactic, as a, as a part of the narrative per se. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Everyone feel free to join in if you have any others. Uh, Things yeah, to add. Yeah, I'm Sorry about that. that. I mean, that yeah, kind of politi- politicizing that. So for the international, this new year and annual events, and also it is for the international community to remind it about their guilty, the, the guilty conscience. With you, you looked on. Or we are trying to stop genocide, so you can't tell us anything. So if we have to remind every year at the ceremonies, you are invited, the gate that actually you didn't you didn't do anything, and therefore let's allow the 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 RPF to do whatever they want. And so they were coming back to the to the to the whole politicizing this. That's why I said the cynicism is meeting the threats, political threats. The Hutu that the biggest threat for genocide. Anyone who said you have genocide ideology, and on the also controlling history, we are the ones who can write the right history. So they have written the history, and they say if you control people's history, you prom- you, I mean you control the people. So you control the history, and then also the minds, feeling that actually I'm guilty. Actually, I'm, to be surviving, I'm lucky. The Hutu saying I, I, I would have been, I should have been killed, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive. And so for the international communities to say, but you guys, what are you saying? You have be you were on or you are on or looking on when I've been, uh, people are being killed, and we are someone who stopped that. How can you tell us? And even then, <laughs> if it comes in, you are not have not to death for the last 30 years. I've worked the permanent threat of FDRR. It also comes in. So that's the whole philosophy about all this, all these ceremonies. It is not, for me, empathy with the survivors. It is more about how do we maintain power no, and how do we convince, keep down the, the, the population, and how do we threaten to always the international community. I can't stop there for the moment. Let, I don't like to come and speak. Sorry, yeah. for, for, sorry for taking for too long. No, no, no. You really uh, gave us sort of like a pathway to follow. I actually think I want to add a point. I, I've i always found it almost traumatizing growing up Rwandan. Um, and so the last point you say is really true. They've used this dark memory to n- not only traumatize the generation, but also to explain why they have to uh, isolate and disfranchise the Hutus because these, in a, in a way, there's a context of these animals can't be trusted. Remember historically what they did. So we have to be in control in order to keep it safe. So I'm going to bring in uh, Nelson here. Um, thank you for your patience, Nelson. If you could um, add any thoughts you had to that or how you also find this um, truth and reconciliation process. Is it there for you? Is it even, um, can we even call it that? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sasha. Uh, I hope that you're listening to me. Okay. Um, yeah, you're good. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you have read this topic, and which is uh, uh, particularly sensitive during this time when we we, we have, uh, we remember the 100 days of uh, uh, genocide. Uh, it is very difficult because when we want to see the background of this genocide, uh, the truth is that uh, the Arab PFRG, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, uh, uh, or the Rwandan Patriotic Army, turned the government actually today are the ones who uh, put, uh, I think, a, a fire or petrol into fire or something like that. They are the ones who, who who cause instability in the country, and and now they are the ones who are controlling the narrative. Uh, it's a it's it's a project to me that should be clearly 
uh, explain to all one that is particularly young people uh, like Sasha who happen to uh, growing find themselves growing after this uh, event not knowing exactly what preceded or how people were living together or uh, what transpired in the country before 1994. Yeah, uh, you stated it well at the beginning that uh, uh, actually this uh, uh, killings or genocide uh, started in 1990. But uh, who started it then? Uh, was it uh, President Abdelman's regime? Uh, that was trying to uh, defend the territory that had been attacked by Ugandan army uh, because uh, the RPF uh, soldiers who invaded Rwanda were enrolled fully into Ugandan army as, uh, as Ugandans. Uh, but uh, I, I think they never believed that they were, that they were Ugandans. It was just a plan. And, and this brings it to uh, some elements that are not explained uh, in, into this, uh, in, in this history of, of the Rwandan genocide. Because as I was uh, uh, looking at the uh, UN uh, website, how they explained the Rwandan genocide, and uh, they explained that like, uh, uh, Rwandan conflict has been ex exacerbated by uh, white colonialists, uh, who favored the minority Tutsi uh, and uh, Hutus became unhappy. And this is towards uh, in 1900s, uh, I mean, 19th century. But uh, that is not true, even if it's coming from the UN. So the whole thing is, is, is completely uh, falsified. It's a history that is not, uh, not uh, written you know, in, in, with uh, all truth, it's just a mix of lies and truth for for political reasons. Because I believe that the UN had no interest into Tutsis being killed or Hutus being killed. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a political entity that is there, and as you know, it it's, it's, uh, serves most mostly the interests of the West, US, uh, UK. Uh, France. Uh, uh, sometimes the, uh, the Chinese will put a veto or, uh, or Russians, but they, most of the time they don't really interested into uh, this kind of uh, power uh, uh, fighting or struggle into uh, controlling um, the third world countries. Now, when it came to Rwanda now after uh, 1994, uh, I will perhaps uh, summarize what you've been saying, uh, um, both the speakers, Kami and Justin Bahunga, which I'm really uh, grateful for their input. Though uh, everyone speaks from their own perspective, or Bahunga, I believe he's a politician. <laughs> he, will, he will always uh, perhaps uh, speak as a politician. I don't know where Kami... Uh, put himself, she herself into whether she's a, a, just an ordinary Rwandan or allied, uh, aligned somewhere into politics. But myself, um, I'm, I've never been into politics. I've never belonged to any political party, uh, but I've been very much interested uh, in to, uh, developments, just knowing what's going on around as a, as a concerned citizen. Yeah, so now with this kind of uh, uh, distortion of truth that we are living in, it's, it's, it's very hard to uh, find a way to bring the truth because uh, I, I was reading recently, uh, like I, I said in the introduction, I'm, I'm, I'm in Australia, we had a remembrance for all victims. Uh, we remember all victims, be it Tutsi, Hutus, Tua, and the... Uh, uh, foreign nationals who perished during uh, that tragedy, whose lives were cut short. And that is a, it's a no-no to the government of Rwanda. They hate it. They don't want anyone uh, telling the whole truth. They just want to manipulate and then and, and they uh, uh, spoon mouth the whole world, whatever they want them to know 
for political reasons. Now, uh, when, when, when we remember everyone, when we're not just uh, uh, doing this event to oppose or to contradict what the government does, it's a reality. Everyone knows Hutus died, Tutsis died, uh, Tuas, but the world was uh, not discriminating against anyone, including foreigners who were, who were uh, assassinated or killed or massacred as well. Yeah, now, when, when we come to this uh, uh, remembrance, uh, that's what I'm saying, it's very difficult. The truth has been distorted for over three decades now. Uh, the victor's uh, story is a, is a story that has to be written and it has to be known and has to be taught everywhere. Uh, um, I, I was in one uh, event in South Africa before I moved to Australia, where uh, children from primary school and high school were presenting uh, about uh, different African countries. I think that was on uh, uh, Africa Day. And, 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 and the kids were saying, Rwanda is a country that was discovered in 1994. Uh, it, was, it, it was not existing before. And, 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 and I believe that is aligned with uh, uh, the vision of the Rwandan government today, uh, which is uh, predominantly a Tutsi government, uh, because for them, Rwanda never existed before until they came to power. Yeah. So this, all these things are really, it's a big mess. I'm not sure how we're going to start to address it. But uh, when, when dictatorships or uh, criminal governments take over power, they do all they can to raise um, their misdeeds or their crimes. Uh, you can see what happened in Rwanda that after 1994 when they took uh, the, the, the RPF government uh, took over. They started changing everything from uh, the national flag, the national anthem, uh, the names of uh, different um, areas of the country. The, the whole map has been completely changed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is not just to, uh, to make things better, like there was a mistake before. It's a, it, it's a, the reason is just to erase traces of uh, uh, killings that have been done, so that so, someone who will read after 30 years or go to Rwanda, you, you will never find a place that is called uh, Gikongoro or, or Byumba or Rengeri. They put other names and they, their plan is to find a way to, 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 to remove all those, uh, as a, um, those elements, and which is a criminal in itself by the law. When, when, when you are falsifying history or you're removing the in, in, in crime scene, if you remove the elements that uh, have been there before the crime, it, it's a criminal itself. But this is the Rwanda mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. So when we come to remembering now, uh, Rwanda wants only people to remember Tutsis. They don't want anyone to remember anyone else. Perhaps this year, uh, at the 30th uh, anniversary or um, commemoration, they managed to go up to 19 Rwandans, Hutus, who were recognized as Hutus who died during the war, just 90. Uh, before they used to say, I got Wengi Imana, the former prime minister. Uh, this time they have uh, included uh, the former minister of foreign affairs. Ngurinzira. Uh, uh, Ngurinzira, uh, But these are not all be, politicians, right? Were any of them yeah. civilians? Yeah, just politicians, Dutch politicians. Nice. So the civilians are, are not included. And everyone has to uh, believe that. And, 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 and so. Now, for us who have uh, families from the Tutsis and from Hutus, wh 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 what do we do? Are we included? Uh, do we just close eyes? I've been told so many times never to mention families of uh, members of my family killed by RPF. They said, no, no, you just say who were killed by Hutus militias because that's what the government wants. I say, no, I have to tell the truth, the whole truth that's happened because it's, 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 my, it's my life, it's my story. It's a, I, I'm the one who's, who, who lived with the survivors, but they don't want that. 
So we ended up becoming enemies of state. We, 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 we called the names, uh, genocide deniers and all the stuff. But for the sake of the truth, I accepted to be persecuted again, uh, for a second time or a third time, whatever, because I'm not going to budge. Truth has to be told as it is, whether bitter or, or sweet, no matter who it benefits or it is against. The truth has to remain the truth. Yeah, so uh, if we're comparing the regimes or whatever happened before, uh, or commenting earlier on what Justin was saying, um, I'm, I'm not sure who was the person who was, ask, who was asking uh, to be told which Hutu or Tutsi died during a, a president of that Manas regime or whatever, but uh, the, 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 every perhaps every person will will have, will know their own people if they are relatives. Yeah, but I, I I know some areas like in in in, in Tibirira, uh, in Giseni Prefecture, uh, where there have been massacres uh, just after the start of the war, and I, I believe that was not infiltration of uh, Rwandan Patriotic Front. This was done by uh, Rwandan soldiers or uh, even some leaders. So people have been having injustice, you know, because anyway, the government was a dictatorship, though considered by this UN or other, like a, a better dictatorship than Idi Amini or other guys. Uh, but we haven't really heard any mass killings uh, of, that, of that scale. But uh, there have been some injustice and uh, some misunderstanding and some people profiled or things like that. And, and, and giving it to my, my own story myself, when I, I, I started, I finished school, um, my, my, my first job was, uh, I found a job in uh, what we used to be called Caisse de uh, This is uh, like uh, 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 the bank, of uh, workers, if I can say, because and, and the people with the small businesses, uh, which were the very first uh, institution, uh, banking institution that created in Rwanda, a uh, long time. But after a few months, I got transferred. Or I got called to go to work with the uh, in, within the president's cabinet, president office, uh, what you call in the French cabinet du president. So people were shocked. They say, oh, "How can you be?" Uh, called it to work there. Uh, I said, you know, I just asked, um, I applied in uh, um, the department for work, or the, the department of work, and they will send you whatever they want as government. So when I asked the director general of uh, Case de Pal to keep me, he said, no, if the running government wants you, we will have to go to work. I have no power to refuse. And it, it takes them a lot of time to, to scrutinize, to investigate, and knowing the character of the person uh, who has to work in, uh, in, in that office. So when, once you are there, it's up to you. And, and by the way, I, I, I went to the Department of uh, 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 Labor, uh, uh, which was called from Saint Public, and uh, all many folk. The, Director was a Tutsi uh, from uh, Kibungo. Uh, I asked him, look, I have found a job in Kestepan. Now I'm called on the radio to go uh, to come to this office and be told where else I need to go to work. So and I remember sending a letter, say, I have, I've found a job. Please, can you cancel my application? So he told me, look, uh, we don't have the powers to do that. So it's up to you. Uh, you uh, maybe I can escalate this to the director general who you, we was called uh, Mohigana. I remember his name, an old man who has been a, a diplomat before. And I went to his office and he said, Look, we don't have any powers to, to, to change whatever uh, the, the department of uh, whatever the president has decided. If they want you to go to work there, we don't have any, any, uh, any say. It's up to you. If when I go there and say, no, I don't want to work for government, go and say it. I could see that he he was somehow like saying, uh, you're not intelligent enough. If you want to say no, then you can, you can be in trouble. So I went there and started working. 
and everyone will be in shock. You look like a Tutsi. Why are you? Who gave you the job here? Then I asked my colleagues. Uh, um, I was probably the only young, the youngest person in the in the in the, in the place. They said, "Who?" Uh, um, I asked them, "Why? Why everyone is shocked? Tutsis are not allowed to work here. This is a, a country. Everyone is a citizen." Then, really, some people confided in me. They said, "Look." Uh, Tutsis can work anyway, but their character is very dangerous. They, if you bring one here, after a uh, year or two years or three years, all the files will be out to the Tutsis in exile who will who have been planning to attack the country, uh, or, or other vacancies will be filled by Tutsis. So uh, this is how we live with them. I said, look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not having any issues with that. I just come to work, but I want to peace it. I work, I, I just do my job. I don't want to be uh, mixing those, uh, those things. So now, uh, going quickly, I have seen how people were unhappy. Yeah, to see, to see me. I ended up resigning in 1991 at the end, and and, and, and the proceeding in life, so that I, I find myself a bit safer, but not because of the government of the office where I worked. They loved me, they were very good people, but especially soldiers who come to the office. Uh, I've met, uh, I remember Sir Buga, when he came once after the, when the war started, they were always looking and um, say, who is this person here? What is he doing here? Uh, they were not happy to see me, really. So Nelson, yeah, this is a oh, personal, sorry. I'm saying it as a personal experience. So that yeah, uh, no, Justin Bahunga can get it. Maybe everyone has to... their own experience. Yeah. 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 So I, now I, I... I Sorry, before I, let I in, want... before I let in uh, Mr. Bahunga, I was just going to mention how shocked I am. You're describing almost the same situ current social atmosphere that it is, but it's reversed. And I'm just surprised that there was no learning moment from uh, maybe some members who survived from the Tutsis who experienced things like that. And there was no historical transfer of that to, to understand that if they replicated the same actions. It, it will also not end well. Uh, so uh, before we go to Mr. Bahunga, I will let Nelson finish his uh, his uh, his word, and then we'll go to Mr. Justin Bahunga. Yeah, 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 thank you. I just wanted to perhaps conclude that saying, uh, truth has been distorted. Uh, Rwanda has never had any uh, uh, really credible reconciliation since the independence. And, 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 and from this website, UN, uh, United, United Nations website I was reading uh, a few minutes ago when we started, um, they, were, uh, they, they were saying the Tutsis have been favored by colonialists uh, in the in, in, uh, 1800s, when, towards the end of the 19, uh, 19th century, uh, when, when, when Germans and Britons came in. But this is not true. And it is found on the UN website. The truth is that Tutsis have been ruling and they know it themselves. And they, 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 they are proud of that for hundreds of uh, years. Uh, they normally say about uh, four centuries with uh, one clan, uh, father to son, uh, passing power like that. And, 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 and that's where Tutsis became, uh, um, uh, um, I mean, the elite aristocracy became uh, to on top. As, as people who have cows and, and, and the rich and the Hutus became subservience or the vassals, small sort of uh, slaves uh, and, and, and second class citizen. That's how uh, colonialists Service. found the country. Yeah, Tut poor Hutus serving the rich Tutsis. That is <laughs> the history. I don't want to hide it. Whether my uncles or whatever were involved, I don't care. Truth is the truth. So now this is where 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 uh, conflict started hitting each other just before long long time before colonial powers came in, but now they, they say no, uh, this was done by the the, the the colonials. We were living a peaceful like that. We were okay. There was no problem. Seriously, there was no problem. How can people carry others in a, in a bed when when they are tra traveling? Why can they walk on their own? And this is a part of our history. <laughs> Uh, and 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 and, and, uh, and and why when you see in in, in Rwandan landscape some of the good lands places were owned by the Tutsis, 
and, and, and the Hutus, in a, but I come from uh, the uh, uh, western side uh, in the mountains. So you will see Hutus going down in the mountain. The Tutsis are an elevated place on top in a place where they can keep their cattle, their, 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 their cows grazing well. So that's how it is. Now, when uh, there was this uh, revolution in 1959 or 50s, Tutsis resisted the, the, the change. And they're the ones who started the war. They're the ones who started <laughs> killing the, 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 the Hutu leaders who wanted to change. Uh, and, and, and by the way, this is where MDR, I, I told you I don't belong to any parties, but I read a lot. I followed all speeches the politicians say. I want to analyze everything and understand. MDR said, Mouvement Democratic uh, uh, Republicain, whatever, uh, Parme Hutu or whatever, they say, uh, what I found was party for the mass plus the mass Hutu, emancipation of the Hutus. Why did they need emancipation? Because they were second uh, class citizens. Who made them second class citizens? Tutsi aristocracy. Not all Tutsis, mm. because some were not in power, they had nothing to do with that. And when the colonial powers came in, they worked together with them, they maintained the situation. But now everything has been distorted, and they end up saying now only Tutsis died. We should we should never uh, remember the Hutus or other people were killed. And even if we remember the Tutsis alone, Tutsis killed by Ronan and Patriotic Front are not remembered. We know the the, the massacre of uh, uh, priests in in Gakurazo. That is June 1994. These people have never been buried in dignity, and they were Tutsis among the the the, 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 the dead. So um, we have so many. We have Karasira Emable. His family was killed, uh, uh, some by Hutus and others by Tutsis. But those who were killed by RPF, because he said it, he became the enemy of state. He's now in jail. We can go on and on. So there have been injustice. We're never waiting for anything good from uh, the current Rwandan government. And it's not possible that they will bring a, a, about reconciliation because they're distorting the whole thing. And even putting the, the laws to punish people who tell the truth, who, who they'll be called the negationists, they'll be called uh, revisionists, they'll be called uh, perpetrators of genocide, simply because they don't want to agree with uh, the current uh, uh, monitor or whatever control the narrative. Yeah, I, I may end it there because this is a very complex thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelson, for all those points. They were, they were. You're right. It's it's always a very hard uh, uh, topic to speak with, but very necessary. Uh, before I, I let I give Mr. Bahunga a word, I just wanted to mention how it's sad because I think there's that saying that if you don't learn from history, you are you're going to repeat it. And like Nelson, you just spoke about the history of serfdom. Essentially, we had aristocracy and peasants. And this is not a this is not a rare thing that happened in Rwanda. So many other communities around the world also had a hierarchy like that. The problem is that in Rwanda we didn't learn from it, and I see modern Rwanda as sort of a neo feudal Rwanda through neoliberalism. But you they're creating those levels of Rwandans again, which is really dangerous, um, and they've created a new a form of serfdom where majority of Rwandans have no right to land, no right to education. No right to very little. Uh, so, Mr. Bahunga, uh, it, your place. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to, first of all, um, to I put, if ever I made any 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 insinuation that I said that the regime of German was perfect, I hope I didn't make that impression. And for me, one life loss is one too many. So whether the Naruto or Tutsi is, is not a matter. When I was saying that the more people die, Tutsi died and, that, and uh, the RPF is not comparing the numbers. They're saying, I'm just trying to say that the other cannot say it is there to save Tutsis. That's the point I wanted to make simply. Not to say the German was a very good man. I know he had imperfections, but definitely I can say it on my on my word that actually he's much better than 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 uh, than Kagame. Number <laughs> two, Chibirira, I know Chibirira, I think you might remember. I don't know, but when things happen, Chibirira, I know 
there's some prefects, but I don't know the other name. Some people are put in jail. What happened in Chibirida? And he died in prison, if I'm not mistaken. So action was taken in what happened in Chibirida. I don't know which, which incident, but I know for sure. Because I know him, he was working in the president's office at one time. So it's, it's not about like, pointing on to comparing the the regime of Javi Arima and the regime of uh, of RPF. And number two, desk discrimination was there. But I also to point out that when RPF attacked, regionalism was more of a problem than ethnicity. And that is why when RPF attacked a Tutsi led group. The people from the south, mainly from the south, because Karanya was from Hengeri and 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 of course, you know what I'm saying. But many many people will tell you that the problem was more acute in terms of regionalism than than ethnicism. And when Arabs attacked, my eldest daughter asked me. They said the Tutsi have attacked. What are we? What's our tribe, ethnicity? So, the if we do know history, I think we can explain how the opposition was able to align itself with Tutsi attacking the country. Is I think is a measure of showing how we had gone a bit further in bringing about harmony between the three. It was not perfect, but I think it was much better than, than before, and it was better than now. Yeah. And and we will find when we are saying that actually, Abiyarimon is being accused of being more favorite to Tutsis than to Hutus. And when you look at how people from the South complained about the regime, or probably more critical than Pabutus would have been. I was, and I, I would, I'm very happy to have another conversation to say about the relationship, how, about, about the Hutu and Tutsi and North and South, another issue. But for today, I thought I wanted to show that remembrance is being misguided and misdirected and cannot bring about national healing because of discrimination, because of selective justice, not telling the truth, and not distorting history. And then we come to say the history that the whites brought, uh, brought the problem it is, what I'm saying from the beginning is, each regime tries to put a history that justifies what has power. And they say, who has power as history? So the narrative is, there was a peaceful coexistence between the Tutsi until the white people came and distorted it and they put the Hutus, the bad guys. And that, the first and the second public job was nothing else. Mostly it was to prepare for another genocide. That's the narrative. <laughs> and so, and from 1994, from 1960 to 1994, the one did not exist. One started to exist after 1994. That's the narrative. That's what they teach the young people. And of course, as I said, they are imposing history and who controls history controls the people. That's the point I want to make. Yeah. And so when you come to the conciliation, then we have to go to the basics. And which are the basics I said is justice, a truth, acknowledging wrongdoing, historical responsibility of what has gone wrong, and the three, to change the social and the structures to make sure they are inclusive. We are not today. And the other point I was making is we should we should go out of the box, and not only that actually, uh, 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 that the who are not remembered, but go further and say. All these projects, which is look seemingly for even the Tutsi, is nothing else but a tactic to retain power by making a, a foot afraid 
I mean, that actually that you, you are you are you are a killer, you spent all permanently guilty. For the Tutsi to say we are we are we can only survive if we are there to protect you, and anyone who disagrees is a traitor to the cause, and therefore has to be killed. I I'll tell you in the, in the letter of uh, of Diane when he wrote to the president open letter. He said, he said, he said well, there was a man, a young man, was I think the prison warden called him Niseneza, from we called him Nyamata. He was mm. killed. And in her letter, mm. he said, the chief superintendent, innocent Yaturanga, Yaturanga, he said the following, he quoted him, your, your security depends on you. You have to know who you are, how to behave, what you say, and where to say it. <laughs> and this this young man, he had wounds, scars, of surviving the genocide, 1994. And his his problem was that he had, I think he had called Diane to say of mistreatment of prisoners in where he was was warden. <laughs> so who you are. So meaning actually if if you do all off, don't throw the line, you are dead. So keeping so have to think of this group of people who think actually they are profited with the system and that actually they have a problem. Don't think on ourselves that who is that actually this is happening. They are prisoners actually, of the system. Exactly. And so so this so the, and the then thing the international committee I was saying. You you are looking on when people are being killed. And what come at the another subject to say, and they have I I can do that, was it who shot down the plane? Was it there was a trigger? Can be another conversation, but another time. But what I'm trying to say is the keeping to the issue of of reconciliation, it cannot be there without the four elements. That's the point I wanted to make. Not to defend any system. Thank you. Or uh, regime. Thank, thank you so much for that, uh, and you for that clarification. Sorry. Oh, um, so, so we're almost we're almost finishing up, but before I'd like us to tackle just one last subject. In the last two days, I saw two different videos or two different topics being spoken by young Rwandans. One was in Rwanda where uh different groups of young people are taking pictures of themselves at uh, memorials, but they're taking selfies. They're taking pictures that are inappropriate because for them, it, it, but it, for me, it showed the distinction between those in Rwanda who are meant to be traumatized and controlled by the narrative and those who know it is a narrative. And so they're comfortable taking pictures in front of it. And so there was quite a lot of discussion about it, about whether these girls need to be punished under the law, uh, the different laws that Rwanda has for the genocide, because many people found it insulting. But then members of the regime were saying, no, these are young children. They don't need to always be sad in remembering. They can be happy and smiling while they're remembering they're dead. And so there was, there was that, um, there was that uh, fight about how do we properly remember? And then another video I saw was in Toronto and it was young Canadian children. They were having a memorial. And this reminded me about how me and my siblings were out of high school, maybe is starting university when we first learned that in our city, there is Ibuka memori memorials, <clears throat> excuse me, but we had never heard of them, but we grew up in this city. And so it got me thinking, what is the point of putting, let's say 40 young Tutsis who are Canadians in a building to get them to remember uh, the, the Rwandan genocide when the Rwandan Hutu Canadians are not in the room? What is the purpose of a one-sided remembrance, particularly outside in the diaspora? So when Nelson mentioned that in Australia, they had, um, inclusive memorial. I thought that was quite beautiful because in Canada, we are still having Tutsi only memorials, which makes no sense. Um, 
you need the entire picture together in order to fully not just empathize with each other or feel with each other, but to put yourself in the other person's shoes and to understand we're all humans, but we're also all Rwandans. So if you could uh, comment a little bit about this, it seems there's a divide within Rwanda about how the young want to remember it. I think for 30 years, they've been in a depression and they're tired. So they now are starting to break out of the regulations that are allowed uh, versus the diaspora remembering. Uh, we'll start with K Kami. I, I think you've, you haven't said anything in a while. So we'll start with you and then Nelson and we'll finish off with Mr. Bahunga. Uh, okay, so the, the, the question is uh, about how... Remembering with our Tutsi only or remembering with our Hutu only, yeah. especially in the diaspora. It makes no sense. Yeah, it, ma it makes no sense, but uh, until until now, there there is that that narrative that says that Hutus can can, can remember Hutus are are the killers, Hutus are the bad people. So what what we we do here in Belgium is we we do our own thing. Uh, we try to remember on and we begin we begin the remembrance on the sixth because all began on the sixth. Uh, for me and I think for a lot of people, it makes no sense to to say that the remembrance has to to begin on the seventh, while the the plane was shut down uh, on the sixth and all be, be, began on that date. So it's kind of um, where when when we do it on the on the sixth and people say no you don't have to remember on the sixth no, nothing happened on the sixth and, we, and but we here in belgium uh in brussels with uh a, a part of the community we, we we do it on the on the sixth and yeah i think all we have to, uh, what we have to do as uh, a com community is to to try to to embrace embrace our history and do things our way and not wait for the people to tell us what we have to do or what we don't have to do like remembering on the 6th it's um yeah it's um how can i say it? yeah we have we have it's very uh, important cuz if you think yeah, about it it's, it's very, one of the biggest uh, parts of the propaganda it's just a yeah. date but it's so day. powerful. So and that's, that yeah. Powerful. It's like to, to, to forget all that happened before and that all began on the seventh. And the way they they do that, the, the, the narrative is like the, the Hutus came from nowhere and they began to kill Tutsis. That, that's the way they want to show it. That's that's why they they, they, they say that the, the preparation of the genocide what, 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 what was, has begun since uh, in 15, uh, 15, uh, 59, 1959 and that there, that, there, that there there was a process during all those years to to eliminate the the, the Tutsis that yeah one day they, they started and they said yeah we have to kill them because it's the day and that is really uh helpful because we know what happened before. Before when 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 the war began on in ninety, we we know that people were killed during all those months before the sixth of April, and the seventh, <laughs> actually, and um, yeah, I think what we have to do is uh, do the things on our, our own way, and. Uh, and to and to, to try to tell the the truth to, to tell what we know to the young people, and um, and that is why uh, uh, I even invite people, eldest people who who lived things, who saw things, who were in the um, in the public administration, who were in yeah, who were elder than yeah, who, who were like more than 30 or something to tell what they they, they saw what they 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 lived when when they were in Rwanda because like um yesterday i heard um a woman it's a, 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 a survivor saying that 
that the Tutsis were, were not allowed to 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 go to studies in Rwanda since sixty nine. That there were no Tutsi at school. There were no Tutsi in. Um, there were no jobs for for Tutsi. Like like that, that kind of narrative that says that before ninety four, before the the RPF saved the country, uh, the the Tutsi were, were like I don't know slaves. They were like slaves. They were, they, they had they, 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 they was there was nothing for them, and it's kind of wow when you 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 hear that and you 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 know that in your at school you you were with two tutis every time in primary school in secondary school i left rwanda when i was in the fourth uh, fourth degree in um, secondary school and there were always tutis even a lot of tutis in now in our classes so i don't understand when they they, they try to 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 say to make people believe that there were no tutsis at school, there were no tutsis uh, uh, in the administrative uh, pub, public administration. Uh, yeah, like they were inexistent. And it's uh, th th that kind of lie. I think things happened in Rwanda. People were killed. They were really killed and they were really killed because they were what they are, like Tutsis, even those were Hutus. And I think it's not, there's no, it's not necessary to, to yeah, to add lies on what happened. Not only to tell the truth on what happened, it's it's enough, It's it's sufficient. And then to to tell lies that, but that's uh, why they have were... to lie. <laughs> that's why they have to lie because the truth yeah, is too. Yeah, but uh, it's enough. But... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know what you the, mean. The, the tragedy was uh, such a tragedy that yeah, that uh, what happened tells yeah tells everything. It's not necessary to 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 add things that never happened. That Tutsis were killed. The the, the 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 since um since 60, 59, they, they were killed the whole time and they were really like nothing in the country yeah it's um it's a nonsense and uh and it it it's it brings to 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 the young generation it it brings that that hatred hatred they 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 don't have to yeah they don't have to to hate other people because what they they hear are really lies only lies and uh but if we continue like that they, i don't know how uh it's like what nelson said i don't know how we're gonna take that back the the, the history the the mentality the way people used to to live uh, more or less in uh in harmony because everything can be can be perfect but uh, but we had a, a way, and with the time, I think it, it would have been better than what it was before. But with the with the genocide and with the lies that came after, I don't know how we're gonna get that back. And uh, sometimes I'm uh, desperate. I'm like, wow, we have a long, long way to go before before that that country become. A real country with with uh, a people with uh, uh, people coming together with uh, yeah and a, a united population. So yeah, trust, it, it trust, trust each and, other, uh, trust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thank uh, you so much, Kami. Um, I think I had said uh, Mr. Nelson would be next. Before I give you the the floor, Nelson, I wanted you had mentioned something about having a uh, family in both wings. And it's very annoying when people try to get you to either stick to one narrative or say one thing. I grew up in a pacifist family. I think I keep saying that. And in my community, they didn't believe in war or any of that. So growing up, I always had a Tutsi next to our families. They were intermingled and everything. So this always used to confuse me. Uh, but I want you to, to, I guess, speak on that about how 
we need to uh, reach out again, those, especially those communities who had been doing it. We need to be the first to put our foot out there and say, no, we're all the same, we're all Rwandans, and we can recreate um, a society of trust and empathy and humanity again. So Nelson, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Sasha. Um... I'm I'm a very really, uh, I'm proud of you. I like the the, the the way you have interest in knowing what transpired in the Rwandan history and uh, uh, putting your life at risk because uh, whoever wants to challenge the the current narrative is is is, is a targeted because it had to be silenced. Uh, um, yeah. Now coming to this, uh, I, I want to. Uh, perhaps comment on what Kami said, the reason why this kind of commemorations, uh, or no, you said it in the beginning in Canada when you you, you heard about this. Uh, and, and Kami also mentioned something happening in, in Belgium, probably, uh, where they have a lot of associations of uh, uh, victims of uh, genocide and survivors and, yeah, uh, leading these things. Now, uh, this is... Uh, uh, divide and rule uh, tactics, but the government of Rwanda does. They are the ones who control uh, uh, Kibuka, uh, the remembrance. You always see President Kagame <coughs> having the flame of remembrance, his wife, well dressed, on a thing, because he needs to show his card to the whole world so that everyone may be silenced. And then just shut up. Don't ask me why I, I, I imprison people or people disappear. Look at these bonds. Look at uh, this. Uh, this whatever happens here, so, and it's it's then there for emotional whatever reasons, uh, so that um, foreign dig dignitaries coming to the country uh, will not will change their speeches or or, or just uh, forget whatever happened. You, you can see how uh, the, the 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 government of. Uh, uh, of the West, US, France, and they go and they kneel down to President Kagame, especially during the, this commemoration. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is, a, that is the way this government of Rwanda uh, survives. They survive on lies, on manipulation, intimidation. Actually, I call it a terrorist government to me, because who, who takes power after killing people? and maintains the power by killing people and silencing them. When you, you read the newspaper or uh, testimonies of people who get uh, uh, dis disappeared, who get arrested by the police in Rwanda, they put them in the bags. That's what happened to Paul Sassabagina when he was kidnapped. He, he narrated his story. There are many others who rounded up and targeted and put in a, in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a bag, in a head, like uh, uh, these uh, uh, Al Qaeda tactics, seriously, a, a state police doing that to its citizens who are going to be questioned so that they don't know where they are being taken. It's ridiculous. But this is what we have. Uh, now, they do that because they want to, to survive and stay in power. And they believe once it is take too long, because they, they always say, a lie that has been said over and over, and it may end up becoming uh, trusted, uh, believed as truth. And, 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 and with the, the, the life psychology, they, they also say when, uh, I, I think uh, uh, they, they say some of the Hitler's uh, generals also use that, they were saying they will tell this lie over and over, enforce it in the media everywhere until everyone has to believe it. And when People who are digging the truth, like Sasha, <laughs> like Kami, or Justin Bahuga, who would love to tell the real truth, come up and, 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 and say, no, this is what happened. Those people are now the ones who get believed as liars. And that is exactly what's happening in a in, in country. So th those, those commemorations, they happen in order to divide the Rwandan community. I, I, I participated in many. and. Uh, I, I, I ended up uh, now, I'm not allowed to, talk, to to attend anymore because they select who attends. It has to be someone who is in favor with the regime, uh, whether you are Tutsi or Hutu, they don't care. If you have not prescribed to what the RPF government wants, you don't get invited. Not all Tutsis get invited, no. They so there's no, there's no organic 
part of the I thought it was like the community. It is that state controlled. It's state controlled. They send the the the, oh, wow. the topic of the every year, and they they used to send the videos from the from Rwanda wow. into exile. This is a video that you're gonna show during your commemoration, and please select a day you want. And this is uh, supervised by the ambassador. This is what it is everywhere in in, in Rwanda, in in in, in Rwanda communities the other side. So they don't want to invite the Hutus because. When during this event, they make a lot of lies. So they don't want any who to, to say, no, you're lying. This is not true. So they want to just go ahead, uh, blinding the, 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 the host communities. Uh, and we used to say uh, white people can be lied to very easily because they are very emotional, but it's not true. They, they, they still see the truth. You cannot lie to someone who's intelligent, who can read. The, yeah, um, um, so the, this is what they do. It, it's, 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 it's just controlled by, by, uh, by this, uh, these people. And when it come to the start of the, uh, uh, the genocide, which is clearly on the 6th of April, till 14th of July, when the RPF controlled the whole country, all the borders, 14th of July, that's when you have 90, 100 days. But if you start from the seventh, you have 99 days. But everyone says we ha the genocide happened in 100 days, it's from the sixth. And, and, and everyone knows about uh, what uh, the soldiers uh, are running a the front, uh, two the soldiers who were in, in um, this uh, uh, parliament complex in Kigali, what they did on the same night, they came out and they started killing people around there. And uh, that's when uh, 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 this politician, uh, Landua, got killed. And he got killed by these same guys, actually, <laughs> because they have been trying to exacerbate the conflict so that uh, the president of the Emmanuel's regime look very bad. Uh, and, and, and they're killing prominent politicians, targeting them so that the chaos can happen. And then they took over power. So this is uh, all manipulations, and it's it's done just to 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 sit the, the the government forever. And and look, it's really sad to see uh, how uh, President Kagame seeks for elections from the Hutus, who are the majority in the country, and he oppresses them. <laughs> they are not allowed to to say anything. No child who lost his or her parents in Biumba during the war, can go to the national television and tell the story. Throughout the whole year, it's not allowed. You cannot even sing a song that is about reconciliation. That's what happened with Kizito. All his songs got removed, and these are Christian songs. Not even in the churches, people can play those songs because that will be against government. So everyone is scared. So we have a government that is a terrorist, that is ruling by uh, uh, fear, because dictators use fear. When you instill fear into your people, the people will serve you without thinking. And uh, that is what I sometimes call the Stockholm Syndrome, where, where, when, when, when the perpetrators, I mean, the, the, um, the, the, the person who is persecuting people, uh, uh, these people end up finding that he's the one actually who loves them. Yeah, that is where, 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 where Rwandans are. So it's a, it's a, it's a really sad. These commemorations really never bring any healing, but it's open up the wounds. Because uh, in reality, uh, for me, this is, was uh, the only year I felt okay. I never had uh, like a, uh, flashbacks or, or feeling a headache and uh, sleepless nights. Uh, for the last 29 years, it was every time. But this year, I feel like I healed. So maybe because I don't attend these things anymore where they are making lies. Because it, it, you can really have a headache when you hear what happened and people using someone's problem for political gains. It's, it's, it's sad. So now they're opening up the, those wounds and they don't want the wounds to heal. That's why they select uh, 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 Tutsi uh, kids and tell them things so that they can hate their uh, fellow, how, how do these kids go back to play in, in, in a game in a sports or whatever? 
after having taught these things in, in their uh, groupings, uh, um, like Farj in Rwanda, uh, or, 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 or these other, other things they do to divide. So this is their, their way. So they're not the ones who are going to bring a, a peace. But look, for, for, for uh, uh, survivors of the genocide against Tutsis and Hutus and whoever got killed, believing in what uh, uh, the prescription of the government in this kind of remembrance, it's, a, it's actually self-hate because you're not hearing. Who is going to have the sleepless night? Not Kagame. He will be watching his soccer in the UK. He doesn't care. And, and nothing happened to him. So that's how they, how they do. So many people, Rwandans need to wake up because once the government of RPF is gone, we're going to stay together. Uh, look, I've, 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 I remember what uh, Justin was saying about uh, government. Habyarimana never intended to, 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 to kill Tutsis. No. Even with uh, my personal experience I've had in the office, when I went to Arusha to testify, I had to, to, to tell them where the office was and who was the next. It, it was in the same complex, but he, I never had any, any problem with his, his soldiers and his guards or, or his, his, his counselors or anyone. No, I just said during the war, when the war started, these uh, high rank soldiers used to come to the office and yeah, they're the ones who really gave me like a threat, but they couldn't do anything anyway. It was not their office. But I, I felt very much uncomfortable. Yeah, so Haderiman had his own ways as, as a good dictator, as he was uh, termed in, in Africa. And uh, he had his uh, faults, wrongs. But guess what? No one say what's, what wrong Kagame does. I mean, from the, his supporters. No one say this is wrong. There's nothing that the government of Rwanda does wrong in, the, in their policies. They always say all good. I mean, the supporters, why you call it in or, or, or those, uh, uh, I call them even his militias, because they're the ones who are allowed to, 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 to hunt down everyone who disagrees with them. Like me, they don't care. They will still give you the poison. They will still uh, point where you are so that these uh, soldiers can come and maybe, uh, they're these guys, they're all over the country, all over the world. They are having, a, I think I want to close, to close with this. Government of Rwanda controls Rwanda in the country and outside the country. There's a department uh, in a foreign affairs department. I mean, uh, yeah, a, depart a, a directorate, whatever. Uh, because there's a director general in charge of Rwandans in uh, diaspora. Uh, I, I remember she was a lady before. And her office is to control Rwandans in all countries who are in diaspora. So how do they do that? They created what they call Rwandan community abroad. This is a new terminology, uh, which started like a, close to the time of uh, COVID in 2000, four years ago. Before they, they used to call themselves diaspora, but everyone is diaspora, is a member of diaspora, whether you're a Hutu, a refugee, whatever. So they find, oh, this is now mixing up. Like they don't want to mix the bonds of the survivors during the genocide, they want to separate everything. So now this Rwandan community abroad uh, unit in uh, uh, Minafet is uh, in charge of controlling, following a, on a daily basis, the lives of Rwandans who are in, in, in diaspora. So now this, this group works with the embassy in every region. They have a, a committee, they register the organization, and then they work to plan uh, the commemoration of genocide. They do Chizukibuka. Um, they also do uh, 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 the victory, and I think was it the 14th of July or 19th of July? No, 14th of July, when RPF took over the power, they also have a celebration. Uh, they do as well uh, all other community things like Muganura. Uh, they, they perform and, and invite dignitaries and dance and do things. So this is what they do. Uh, and and, and it's, it's not inclusive. It's, a, it's a separating. So we will not have any uh, government that will help survivors 
uh, all ethnics combined to heal in Rwanda today, unless this, the, the, the regime changes. Some people, uh, I, I follow recently things that they will say, uh, uh, this is the new thing trending, uh, how do you call it? Um, yeah? uh, good for all, uh, which is uh, talking about the amnesty and whatever, advocating so that things can change and they can brush out or clear crimes committed by RPF and, 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 and then start a new Rwanda. So I disagree with those things because the truth has to be told. Rwanda has commission, um, at, um, you, uh, how do you call this? The Constitution Commission, but they removed the truth. In South Africa, it's called the TRC, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but in Rwanda, it's called Reconciliation Commission. That means <laughs> reconciliation without truth. In Canada, it's we're, also we're, truth we're, and reconciliation. It's truth yeah, and reconciliation worldwide. They, they, they deliberately removed that because with the moment you bring the truth, the government will fall. So I encourage you guys who are standing up, uh, uh, join the movement, whether you, 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 you go into politics or in, in our civil society, but let the truth be told and never allow anyone to silence you because uh, if, uh, if, if you accept it, then that creates uh, further conflict and mistrust among our communities, among our children, and, and, and we, we never have uh, uh, one. I, I mean, I'm trying to find a way to overcome this. Yeah. That's yeah. only when good Rwandans, Hutu, Tutsis, Tuas, all yeah. work together and fight injustice that is being committed today, because that's the present challenge we have. And work together towards a bright future and they never so fear thank you thank you i i so very much uh, agree with all that and the more the the more of us there is the louder our voices and the stronger we're all together uh, mr justin bahunga i you have uh, the last word to close us out on your thoughts about our topic today oh i just wanted to also mention i love how you keep bringing back the importance of historical relevance or historical memory. I feel like there is a tendency to try and erase the history of 59 and independence. Uh, I think we need to come back again and just tackle that and how it has impacted all of Rwandan uh, currently. But uh, your, the floor is yours. I think I'll start with that. that point, I was starting with the point we just made. I think it is very important and I'm a part of an organization of uh, called FDU, and if whether they or not, I think the key one of the key things will be the clarification of our history, or to have a consensus history, because each one has been writing according as I saying to justify how why they came to power and why they they maintain power. When, for instance, when they, I was saying, and I don't want to repeat again, how they describe how things were good, then 1959 it was destroyed by the Belgians, and then two, two government, who the government that were preparing for genocide, and then you have got to the, the 1994, there is a one that starts again, they have gone the history, and then they are contributing the writing of history by saying, if you write it differently, then you are this or the other. So we need, we need, I think we need to agree. We need to be, uh, to have an independent people at the end of the day who can write our history. And we think if there is a change, one of the things you have to do is writing writing a consensus history. I just want to comment that we're saying, I agree with it entirely. When it comes to, do you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, so, we can hear you. Yeah, we hear you. We can hear you. Okay, we can hear you. you. So, so when it comes to, to the dates about the commemoration, for me, I think for me, the semantism unnecessary. And I fear, and that makes it fear that we for the same uh, problem or the same cynicism like Agam or like Agam and his group, who politicize a national tragedy. Mm. Genocide against Tutsi, crimes against humanity, 
and genocide against the Hutu, these are national tragedies. It should not be used as a card for political gains. And that is, I repeat again, when we say there was Hutu genocide, not to deny that there was genocide against Tutsi, it's just saying justice must be done irrespective of the victim or perpetrator. That's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So saying that we should not even mention that there could have been genocide against Hutu is discrimination, is racial discrimination. Mural on the cook, pure and simple. That this is ours, nobody should claim that. And of course, the other system I was talking about is using it to oppress, to kill, imprison, make people disappear. And that's all points. That's how they politicize our national tragedy. And let not anyone appropriate this national tragedy for, for personal, for political ends like other people is doing. So we have to mourn every life. Every life is important. As I said, any life, Afri I need one uh, life lost. It's one life too many. None should be be going. So fighting over who, who, how many, how is is irrelevant. Or which date? From the key point is we have to remember the honor the dead. Whatever when the Hutu or Tutsi or Utwa, we we'll forget about them. That is important. We have to do that. Secondly, I think it is very important to internalize the fact or the belief that the conciliation is necessary for, for, the, for the survival of Rwanda. Rwanda can disappear. Congo has just lost, they say, 12 million. In 1994, we were about 7 million. So the Congo, 7.9 million. So and now we are 13 million. Meaning, if we do in the terms, the comparative terms, like 12 million of Congolese, and that's what we could we could easily get finished. And no, you know, we not we not actually nobody will will care. So our survival depends on on internal the fact that we need each other, and for for part of survival, for the survival of, of us all, we have to do that. And, and for that reason, if there is a group like the regime which is on now, try to use a tragedy to or political gain, it's leading us exactly with the situation to the worst situation than before. I told you when we were starting, the study was done by University College of Los Angeles. That Rwanda of the one of the five countries surveyed. Rwanda, Sudan, and the Syria were the most exclusionary in terms of ethnicity. And we're saying the, such countries three times more likely to go into civil war than the countries where these are inclusive. So therefore, it's in our interest of our survival as a nation to reconcile and to remove anyone or a group that acts contrary to a country's survival. As the Arab people are doing now. So the change is good for everyone. Now, who to, to the author of the Bible, this group has to give way to people who are national, who have got nation at heart, not just in any politicking. And I have shown how this group is using the genocide to suppress not only the Hutus, but also to pursue and kill and imprison even survivors of genocide. Remember Mushaidi, Emabri Karasira, Kizito, who died because he was saying, whatever whatever instrument we use to kill you, you have to be, whether that is a, it is a grenade, whether it is a gun, you have to be remembered. And that is my hero. I mean, I believe that. And then I think I think it was again in coming was about it was very concerned about the trust, and I think you are the same. Unfortunately, the first thing that happened in the dictatorship is to kill the social capital, mm. these networks, social networks, 
that reinforce or, or a groom decided to survive. Today, though, a wife can betray the husband, a husband can betray the wife, a child can, can betray the parents because they feel that they come together, they can easily plan. I'm not even, even the, mili the, the military, if you want to visit somebody, you have to inform. So they don't want people to come together to form and they discuss and they complain. Remember they say that in Hawaii, in Ghana, so in Ghana, it's like you can't complain. So, 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 so unfortunately, this has, but, but I think the, what was the hope you have in Kami is, you know, I think it is Rutakin uh, who said that this generation will repent, not because of the few wicked, but because of the silence of the good majority. That's what is happening yeah, now. That's true. So that's yeah. what and so, so we we have to do that. And unfortunately, the most the most vocal, the most threatening are the ones actually who take over. And then I just keep quiet. So I have that fear. And the other one is I think all of this is about the political elite fighting for power. The ordinary Rwandan wants peace to be able to, to farm his or her farm well to go to school and succeed. But the whole point is about the political elites mm. fighting for power. And we have also be careful, even when we are in the opposition as we are, that people who love power too much, when they go there, they might do the same. They might not kill yeah. like, they might not kill That's like true. his group because they are more, they are got more threats, but they can use other manipulation to remain in power. We have got, we have got President Museven has been here for the 36 years. <laughs> That thing can like, but he's there. So, so we have, and and I remember, you know, when he was swearing in on the 29th of January, January 1986, when he took power, he said the biggest problem of African leaders is never want to leave power. Yeah. And he's there, 26 <laughs> years later. So, you know, this we are doing, we must make sure that we make the right choices. We make parts we put institutions, we strong institutions. What I have seen, like, like in the case here, by the Prime Minister, Prime Minister was, who was actually moved because he told the lies. In Africa, I think like, being like a lie is, is not a big problem. Mm -hmm. so, so, we ha so we have to put the system that can control people. I think a man like Trump would be in power if he was in Africa, he would still be in power. And he's been taking him to court. He's in court for stealing, for whatever. So I think those are the key things that you have to build on, and I I'm happy that I'm part of a group, or, or a part of a group, a political group, a political organization that actually feels that institutions have to be built to ensure that they control the people, the people who last for power, who don't want to leave power. So I think I probably I had better stop here as a conclusion. I said this for this is what the cynicism of of uh, of the present government they say every life matters. Every life matters. One life lost, one life too many, whatever who told Tutsi is in the matter. Two, again, repeat, we must be aware and internalize the fact that a conciliation is a cornerstone for the survival of our nation. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever we do, trying to put things right, it is our own interest. Another one for someone else is for us to survive. The value of our children, our children is our our uh, our. It is in the interest of the our whole community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bahunga. I learned so much from you each time we talk, and I, I always end these uh, conversations by reminding young English speakers who especially who are in the diaspora, this will affect us. I know sometimes it feels like we are very far away from this, but we are a diaspora. We have connections that do impact our lives. So uh, anytime you do listen to these, please uh, share them widely and come join us because there's a lot you might be able to add to what we said that maybe we don't have a viewpoint that, that you may know, but again, our my what I want is to create some sort of Rwandan community where everyone feels welcome, um, 
and yeah, we can create something that helps other people uh, back home as well. Uh, before we sign off, if anyone else has a final word they wanted to say, uh, they can. But otherwise, thank you again very much for being with me. My name is Sasha Kainde, and we have these talks on radio, TV, and Pinduka. I cannot speak in Yaranda, so don't laugh at my pronunciation, but I very much enjoy your time, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sasa. Just the, the last word is uh, I have to thank you for being so um, implicated in the in the Rwandan history. The, the, at your edge, it's really amazing to see to see that you're so interested and uh, and I can see that there is more and more young people who are really interested in their history and uh, and they want to know what happened to their country, what happened to their parents, why they are here, uh, why they cannot return. And um, yeah, it's really great to see to see the young people so implicated. Thank you. Yeah, um, if I'm allowed, I can also have my final words. Go ahead, please. Yes. To, say, to say thank you, and I'm glad to have met uh, Runinya, Kami. Uh, I, I think maybe we know each other on social media. Uh, yeah. Just like that, but the first time <laughs> to be together. And um, just Teba Hunga, I know him. Uh, I follow a lot of um, their um, activities in the FDU. Um, yeah, like uh, all other... Uh, political formations. I, I I really like to to know what Rwandans are doing and and uh, yeah and, and 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 I'm proud of things that are positive, things that are really good. That which I'm passionate about social justice. So anything that goes that line, I, I will be there to to to, to intervene. And uh, for the audience, if there's any word that maybe we have said that is not. Uh, in line with what you knew before or what you would love to hear and we didn't say it, or maybe you feel like a bit hurt somehow because truth hurts. Mm -hmm. We are sorry for that. Uh, and uh, perhaps next time uh, that uh, come and, uh, and and raise your voice the, rather than complaining, yeah. oh, this person says so, 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 this one is negating that. Come and say it openly. Uh, and uh, finally, Sasha, if there is a, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I, I feel like saying Sasha, not Sasa. Uh, <laughs> it, it's both, it's whatever. I actually say okay. Sasha, but yeah. a lot of, uh, no. yeah. <laughs> no, next time, if, if, if you can organize probably a platform where more young people or uh, challenging ideas can come from, um, I, I'm really interested in seeing uh, these uh, manipulated Rwandan youth in diaspora or at home together and, 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 and challenging each other and discussing because uh, like I was saying in a, in, in a comment, this will be the future uh, of, 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 tomorrow, uh, of Rwanda. Those are the ones that the tomorrow's leaders. So they should take in, in their hands uh, the, the, what we have now and understand the dynamics and uh, uh, so that they be able to to lead. Otherwise, uh, we will be led by criminals like we have today in power, and uh, there will be no justice for anyone if the criminal is on power. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good night wherever you are. For me, it's uh, almost going to be morning now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I will go back and have uh, finish my sleep. Thank oh, you. thank you so much for making thank time you. for us. Uh, Mr. Bahunga, if you can close us off. 